Actually, you should seeing something uh, EMB 2123 at my back. Let me know if not able to see anything. Uh, Teams is having some technical issue uh, today, so uh, don't worry if you if you have seen some of the button missing, right? Okay, let's let's start. Let's review some some of the. Uh, some of the concept that we learned previously, just recap, huh? because we're going to use all this in uh, one of the example for today. And um, there will be appendix, they, they already have an appendix B in the themes folder, just to uh, refresh on the vector analysis. Huh? So we have uh, gone through a few, uh, a few concept about position, displacement, uh, velocity. Um, so for collinear, collinear is a bit different from the straight line, straight path. But when you have a curved path, we are focusing on delta R instead of S. Okay, we're focusing on delta R. And then we have we will equal the dr over dt equal to ds over dt when we want to find the velocity. And yesterday, we also mentioned something important is that a velocity is a vector. And this vector is at the location of uh, tangent of the path. Huh? Tangent of the path is where your vector is. Huh? And yesterday also we mentioned a concept of acceleration and we developed a uh, calculation for acceleration using vector diagram on a hodograph, okay, on a hodograph or imaginary curve that located at the origin or at the tail of two vector. So when we have a velocity one, velocity two, from this, this head to this head, it will give you the delta V. You take this delta V divided by T, you get the acceleration. Okay. And yesterday also, uh, before we go back yesterday, we also um, mentioned the direction of the acceleration for a curve, uh, for a particle that move along a curve path. So the A is tangent to the hodograph. If you mention acceleration in the hodograph dimension, there are two dimensions. Huh? Uh, you can say acceleration, you can mention acceleration in hodograph dimension, or if you apply the vector, acceleration vector for on the path, then your acceleration will be always pointing towards the center of your curve. Okay, there are two definition for, there are two dimension if you want to mention about acceleration. There are two explanation that you can do. One is using hodograph, where your acceleration vector is tangent to the curve of your hodograph, or your the acceleration is always pointing towards the center of the part, okay, of a curved part. So this is what we develop and. Acceleration also have two calculation. One you use velocity, and another one you use the displacement uh, parameter, where you differentiate, you you do a, a second derivation, or you do you do double uh, differentiation on the equation of your displacement. Okay. So this is what what we cover yesterday.
today we will combine what we learned so far a curved linear motion on x y z coordinate or we call it rectangular component okay so we have covered the definition of curved linear motion yesterday uh, in our previous class today we put the motion into rectangular uh, grid or rec rectangular component or you can say we put everything in Cartesian plane a three-dimensional Cartesian plane that give you x y and z coordinate okay so I think you are familiar with x y z coordinate by referring to this table or this uh, photo you know that when you have a three dimension you have z direction you have x direction and y direction and the blue line here is the path if a curved linear path of the particle means this particle move along a curvature or a curve inside x y z dimension and you know that when you calculate about the velocity acceleration they are vector vector come with direction and magnitude so when you talk about direction in x direction you already been uh, you learned this one before we will use the um, vector unit of i we are use the bolted i or you can use the head you can add a arrowhead above the i to represent the direction in x direction so we will use the vector direction of i for x direction vector of j for y direction and vector of k for z direction and to locate the particles inside this three dimensional uh, uh, this three dimensional uh, coordinate we can define the position of this particle at any time by combining the three dimension of x y and z so you know that your displacement is a vector form so your r vector equal to xi plus yj plus zk so i think you learned this one uh, in your mathematics class when you talk about vector all right so now you apply what you learn in your vector chapter put inside this engine dynamics uh, uh, context okay so you you combine what we learned previously on collinear motion we put inside a known position of a rectangular component all right when you seen an equation like this r equal to xi or uh, during exam maybe to avoid confusion i will use arrowhead of i to represent vector i or vector in the x direction so xi plus yj plus zk to represent uh, the uh, displacement right or the position right in this case we call it a position so there will be two form of writing either the board ijk or in exam to avoid confusion uh, i will use i hat i arrow head k arrow head to represent vector direction okay i think this one you're familiar stop me if you don't understand what you see on the screen eh? just stop me and ask me a question and what you learn in vector chapter in mathematics when you're given a vector you can find magnitude by taking x square the magnitude of each dimension you square it and then you put a square root so to find the length of this vector right r is a vector so vector have magnitude and direction how to find magnitude of this vector you square root of your x square plus y square plus z square you get the magnitude of your r vector okay 
the i, j, k tell you the direction of the vector. Okay, so this is just a basic definition of position. Okay, so for collinear motion in rectangular component, or we say in three-dimensional component, the three-dimensional um, definition, we use R to represent position with IJK. Okay, direction. Because this one is three direction, your X, Y, Z direction. So to find the direction of R, direction of R, how you find the direction of R, we use this equation. U R equal to direction of your R, U R equal position, position means this, this equation, R, is R equal to this, this X, I, Y, J, and Z, K divided by magnitude of the R with this, this equation. Then you get the direction of your vector or direction of your uh, position, right? So this is just a recap how you find the vector uh, parameter. Definition of vector, magnitude of vector, direction of vector. Okay, later we'll use this definition to solve problems. Okay. We have done definition for position. We use R. Then next one, we talk about velocity. So, think or recall back the definition of velocity. Velocity is the differentiation of this uh, position towards time. So what you can calculate from this equation, this is a position. So when you want to calculate velocity, you differentiate this whole vector with a time. Okay. And again, just remind, how do you draw velocity vector? You need to follow the curve. And at each point, the velocity vector is tangent to the curve, curvature of the path. This is a vector definition. Huh? When you want to draw velocity arrow on a curve, okay? you always tangent to the curve. Okay? Just to recap, Okay, so um, equation for velocity, you know that you take position divided by time. In this case, since we are given the coordinate, we use the position divided by time, dr over dt, meaning each one of it, you divide by time, divided by time, divided by time. So mathematically, you write d over dt bracket, the position of the coordinate system, xi plus yj plus zk. So far, any question? So far, anything look normal to you, right? Any questions so far? Steven, you okay? No questions. Okay. Let me check attendance one more time. Pranes, are you here? Pranesh Vinok, are you here? Okay. Shilton, are you there? Shelton, calling for Shelton. Shelton, open your mic if you're able to hear me.
So, I should say so. Okay. But she didn't have problem with the MST. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, today we have a function. Okay, good. Okay, uh, okay, since uh, it might not be fair, la, but uh, uh, Prem, Pranat, uh, Prem, right? Can I call you Prem? Prem? Yes. Okay, Prem. Uh, just to just to check whether you understand or not. Since you're given the position, right? How do you calculate the magnitude of the position? Do you still remember? Squaring the whole thing. Uh, not whole thing. Square and square it. No. no. Not whole x. X what? Square root x what? X squared plus y squared plus z squared and then square root of it. Correct. Okay. Not whole thing. Eh? So whole thing means you include i, j, k. Eh? All right. So yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Let me test. Uh, Nagesh Warren. Nagesh Warren, are you there? Okay. Just now you hear the answer from uh, Prem. Prem, answer the question for magnitude. How do you find the direction of the position? Uh, you need to get the position, uh, position divided by the magnitude. Position, be, be, uh, okay, correct. Okay, good. So I think uh, uh, this class, you have a very strong uh, understanding in vector. So we continue with velocity. You do the same thing for velocity. You do the same thing for velocity. So, um, if you differentiate, uh, okay, this one need to go a little bit slow because you need to refresh your differentiation steps. As you can see there, there's a small step I put there. If you differentiate dt over xi, what you do, you have that steps. You differentiate, uh, basically is a, uh, 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 it's a uh, what rules? Uh, um, it's a multiplication rules or it's a product rules when you do uh, two function here, right? You differentiate two function. So what you do uh, means you differentiate u and v, the one that you learn in mathematics. That this is u, this is v. So you differentiate uh, u and v. So if you differentiate dt over if you differentiate the xi basically you differentiate x and then you differentiate i so what you do you differentiate the x the t and then copy the i plus the x and then you differentiate the i over the t okay this is from your differentiation uh, mathematic chapter this you you assume this one is one equation this one is one equation so what, how do you differentiate two equations there or two uh, functions? You change this one to u, this one to v, and then you do the products of uh, multiplication and then you do differentiation. You will do this one. Huh? So when you differentiate uh, di, you differentiate the x first, copy the i, and then you take turn, you uh, differentiate the i and then you copy the x you get this one okay so again this is a uh, product rules uh, in differentiation okay basically what happened in di over dt this component you can take out because uh, there's no change of your reference direction okay in this one, if you look mathematically, what mean by di over dt? What is i? i is the x direction, right? i is the x direction in your primary reference system. Your i direction doesn't move. You does you doesn't you doesn't twist your reference axis according to this diagram. So you doesn't twist your primary axis. You doesn't do anything on the x y z axis. So basically your i direction or i vector direction in x direction doesn't change towards time. So this component is zero. Okay. However, if you learn about cosmic uh, astronomic later on, when your spacecraft turn and twist, then uh, this one is not zero. Lah, but uh, back to this simple case, your i direction 
do not change. So you can put that as zero. And okay, this one is just a side note. Lah. Okay. And you only left out the x divided by ti if you do the first calculation. You do the same for this one, you do the same for this one. So basically, anything that deal with the unique vector of j, because your reference axis doesn't change, your k also doesn't change, so you can cancel all the second term of your dif uh, uh, differentiation, all become zero, and this one you differentiate, you get this one, this one you differentiate with t, you get this one, this one you differentiate with t, uh, sorry, differentiate with uh, the z differentiate with t, you get this one. Okay, maybe I give you 10 seconds to process. Look at this one. Do you understand what do we have here? Why we can cancel the second part? Why the i over the t we can cancel? Okay, the answer is there. The, the primary axis, it doesn't change. It doesn't twist it. It doesn't pull it or something. It's fixed. So the second term is zero. Apply the same for Z and K. Any questions so far on the equation, on the vector equation? Excuse me, sir. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I still don't understand why is it zero actually. Oh, you mean you don't understand why this one's zero, is it? Yeah, I'm still not getting okay. it. Okay, right. But you understand the mathematical model? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. What do you understand about di over dt? What do you understand about this one? You mean the change, the rate of change of i, right? Yes, sir. Correct. Now, when you plot this graph, do you change your axis? Do you, I mean, in our case here, do you go and twist your x, y, z axis, or do you move, shift your main axis to left, right, up, bottom? No, sir. So if you don't rotate, you don't twist, or you don't pull or push, your eye still same, right? I mean, the, yeah. your origin still same at that position, right? Yeah. Uh, so if you doesn't move, I mean, your, your primary axis of uh, reference, or uh, your vector of I doesn't move, okay. and, you, and, you, and you try to find the rate of change of I, it will be zero, right? Yes. Uh, so that's why we can cancel this part. This part is zero. Di over dt is zero. So x multiply by zero, you get what? Zero, right? Okay. Uh, so that's why we can cancel the second part. And uh, okay. yeah, so uh, that's why I put a, a, a side note here. Your x, y, z reference frame doesn't move. It's fixed. Uh, but this one is mathematics uh, presentation. That's why it might be confused uh, if your vector, uh, those uh, lecturers that teach you vector do not explain clearly what is i, j, and k, then you you might not link up with this. Right? So I hope you you, you, you you can see what what from this diagram and why suddenly this one we can change to zero. Okay, because we doesn't move our, move our x, y, z axis. When, you, when the origin doesn't move, means your i vector is fixed. It's still in that direction. It's still moving in x direction. It doesn't change to, uh, it doesn't change or accelerate a different velocity, right? Uh, it doesn't move. So it doesn't change the position. So the velocity is zero uh, in term of i direction. Okay, so you continue with this one. Uh, any more question before we move on? Any question before you move on? Because later we will develop this one into acceleration. Uh, make sure you understand what is why suddenly you can get this one, this one, and this one. Okay, if you're clear, then we will simplify this right thing, this right thing, and this right thing. We will simplify it because uh, if you have a long equation to calculate, it's very troublesome. You continue to write the t, the x, the t, the y, the t, and the z, the t. So you can write in the simplified form where the rate 
the change of your position in x uh, or displacement in x direction divided by t, you get velocity in x direction. The position change in y versus t, you get velocity in y direction. The change of position in z direction versus time, you get vz direction. So later, we will use vx to represent dx dt, the uh, vy to represent the change in y direction, vz to represent the change in z direction. Okay, so later, in, as we move deeper and deeper, we will use this equation, but at the background, when you do calculation, you have to know what does it mean. Okay, the sub note here means the the dimension that we are looking at. All right. Now, once we have this, all this, okay, I put in this equation here, this whole set equation here on inside the diagram, meaning to represent this green arrow velocity that is always tangent to the curve. Tangent means only touching on one point of the curve. You can represent by this vector form. And again, this is vector, it has magnitude and direction. So you use the same principle, like what how you find the position vector and direction just now, you use the same uh, principle, okay? Magnitude, still same. You square root of your Vx square, not I, huh? Vx square plus Vy square plus Vz square you get the magnitude, the direction still same principle like what you find for your R just now. You take velocity and not position, or not, uh, not position, but velocity divided by magnitude. Okay. And we use UV direction. For V, we use UV to represent direction. What about the direction of R? We use UR just now. Use UR to represent direction of R position. Okay. Okay, UR. And uh, just a side note, I put it one more time again. The V is a vector vector have magnitude and direction, always tangent to the curvature of the path. Path, huh? So I think this one, everyone clear. Let's move on this one to acceleration. Use the same method, apply to acceleration. So to find acceleration, actually you tap on the velocity. So if you understand what is velocity, V equal to Vxi plus Vyj plus Vzk, based on your understanding in acceleration, which is the rate of change of your velocity, which means you take this vector, you differentiate versus time, you get acceleration. So you take A equal to dV, capital V, which means we take the whole vector, differentiate by time, we do the same thing again, d over dt and the whole vector of your velocity. So v divide by dt or differentiate by dt. Again, you're differentiating vx and i just now. You think back how you get the velocity just now. Okay, you will still get back V dV x dt i and V uh, dV y dt j and dV z dt k. I skip one of the mathematics uh, equation that I show you in velocity just now. I didn't show you the step for from here to here I show you, All right? For velocity I show you. When you differentiate x and i, you get this equation, but you cancel because 
your, your frame or your reference axis doesn't move. So you will get dx, dti, that's what you get here. You, you use the same concept of differentiation, like this one, you do it for acceleration, you will get this one become vx, And become vx dti. Actually, there's another part. Uh, if you differentiate this one, uh, two two part. If you do it uh, mathematically, that uh, what I show you just now. Basically, they, there is one more component in the mathematics, but we cancel because our frame or our reference axis doesn't change, right? So we arrive at this one. So again, we further simplify this term because. Uh, when we solve a question later on, um, it's very troublesome. We keep writing this one, uh, dvx divided by t, v dy dt, and v dvz dt. You have a long question, then this one will take up a lot of time to write. So we simplify this one as dv dx dt equal to ax, which is the rate of change of velocity in x direction, or is an acceleration in x direction. Do the same for a y. Do the same for a z. Okay. Again, how do you draw the vector for acceleration on a curve? This is a path. Huh? Again, in the beginning, when I mentioned about acceleration, you have two way of drawing acceleration. One on the imaginary curve, one is on the path. And when you need to draw on the path, you are referring to the center of the curve. So if you look at this example, your curve is like that. So you can guess the center is here, right? If you draw this curve, this curve, the center is somewhere here. So you know that when you draw vector for acceleration, it's always from the curve towards the center of the curve. Okay, so it can be here or here, but it's go inside. Okay, All right. This is just an illustration. Huh? It can be pointing here, or it can be pointing here. But the the main point is that it's always follow the concave a curvature of the curve so that this particle always flying or always moving into the curve or not fly away. Okay. So I put in dimension, magnitude, direction for acceleration. So again, acceleration is a vector, vector and magnitude and direction. You use the same principle. Calculate the magnitude means this one square root plus this one square root plus this one square root. Uh, sorry, this one square plus this one square plus this one square. The total you square root. Okay, you get the magnitude. So A, acceleration means the length of this arrow. Uh, you know, uh, vector is an arrow. With the head and tail, the length of the vector is the magnitude. Okay, so A equal to this one. To find the direction, you take vector divided by magnitude, you get the direction. And how we mathematically in this chapter, we use U sub A to represent direction. We, use, we take the acceleration direction, uh, acceleration vector divided by A, meaning the whole set of this one, AXI plus AZ, uh, AYJ plus AZK divided by this number. Then you get the direction of the red arrow. Okay, All right. Any questions so far for acceleration? Any slides that you're not clear? Everything clear? Stop me uh, if you're not. Clear, sir. Okay, good. Now, 
if so far you're clear, you manage to, uh, I, I think you're ready for your test one, right? Uh, but I will let you know when is your S, uh, test one, right? Don't worry, yeah? Okay, so um, this is also a side note. Uh, because during the test or final exam, sometimes you you are so ten, uh, you are so pressured and you forget the direction of the, you mix you mix up between the vec, uh, the velocity and acceleration. So again, velocity vector is always tangent to the curve. However, acceleration this one is not always tangent to the path, but the direction is always pointing to the center of the curve. Okay, this is just a reminder. When you are asked to estimate the direction or sketch the direction of v vector and a vector. Okay, after you calculate, I give you one equation. I even give you the plot of the path. I ask you after you calculate, draw the vector on the diagram so you copy and then you draw the vector direction and make sure uh, when i give you a curve when you sketch your velocity vector it always touching one point and something like that okay and uh, as uh, for acceleration is always pointing into the center of the curve right something like that Let's look at one example, okay? So uh, you read the question, right? You read the question. So uh, for any instant, the horizontal position of the weather balloon, let's say you tie a weather balloon to a castle, uh, like what you see on the screen here, all right? Uh, quite cute and somebody sitting at the garden. So um, you tie a balloon on the top of the, the castle or building, I label that point as A, and the distance always given by an equation, x equal to 2t, t is a time, t, uh, x equal to 2t in meter. So uh, the question already gives you the direction of x, direction of y. So any moment this balloon was flying, uh, start flying or start releasing, the distance travel in uh, x direction given by 2t. The equation is 2t uh, there. Uh, t is in second. And if the equation of the path is y equal to x squared divided by 5, uh, given in this uh, photo. So again, uh, recall back what you learned in your geometry uh, in mathematics. You know that when you draw mathematics uh, geometry, you have your linear equation, y equal to mx plus c. You can draw quadratic equation, y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. On polynomial equation, a equal to y equal to ax, maybe power 3, plus bx squared plus so on. Okay, so uh, you need to go and review uh, how to draw straight line, how to draw uh, uh, quadratic equation with positive a, negative a, uh, how to draw polynomial equation uh, and all this. You need to go back uh, to all this because there will be a section in the test or final exam to ask you to sketch the behavior of the displacement or velocity or something. Uh. So as you can see here, I show you in the previous example. So you see that we are keep applying what we learned in the foundation year, all right? Uh, so the y, the curve is quadratic equation. All right, it's a smiling face of curve. So x squared divided by five, and I label the location of b. Determine the magnitude and direction of the velocity. Basically, you just need to find the velocity and then find the magnitude and direction accordingly. You need to find the velocity and acceleration when the time is two seconds. Now, the question already gives you some hints. It gives you A to B. There's an equation there. And the 
position from A to this location, just below the B point, the X is four meter after two seconds. It gives you the, the direct uh, information here. How do we start to solve? First, you solve for velocity first, right? You need to give a direction. Um, again, uh, recall, huh? if you don't know how to start, huh? ask yourself, how do you define velocity in three dimensional form? This is two dimensional, so you don't need to worry about z direction. Okay, if you're seeing y and x, uh, y and x axis. So what you've seen just now, what I show you just now in the theory section, we talk about three dimensional, but you look at this question, it's actually is a two dimensional. So you can omit or you can cancel the z direction or anything that you see z, you can cancel and you only solve for y and x. So what you have, you have y equal to x squared divided by five as a y location and x position as two i. So you know that, that there's definition of velocity given by vxi plus vyi, uh, vyj plus vzk. Of course, this one is more detailed. dx over dt, dy over dt, dz over dt. Basically, this is a three-dimensional equation. This is a 2D, so what you do, you can cancel this part and only solve for i and j. So, you only focus on the front part only. You can cancel or you can close the k component and you look at the model or you look at the structure of mathematic model here. What is dx over dt? What is dy over dt? It's a differentiation equation. Right? So call back how to do differentiation, how to do integration. But in this example, you need to call how to do differentiation. You have y equation, you have x equation. We solve for the first one. Vx, Vx, what mean by Vx? Mean velocity in x direction. So we only need to consider anything that link up with x direction. This is the x direction equation. So we take this one to do calculation for Vx and not this one. This is y direction. So it doesn't link with this one, okay? Vx means you only look at x direction. So you compare two equation here and then pick your direction. This is the x direction. So pick this one. So dx dt basically asks you to do differentiation of this simple equation. dx dt, you differentiate this one. What you get? You get 2, right? You differentiate of uh, 2t over t, you get 2, right? You write this one in mathematic differentiation. D over dt, 2t, you get 2, right? The answer in x direction, velocity in x direction is 2 meter per second. Uh, again, for this module, engine dynamic module, unit is very important. So if this one, this question come out in test, uh, of course, uh, we won't use the same question. But if this kind of question come out, ask you to calculate Vx, Remember to give us your answer in unit. Eh? If this one two point, the answer is two point, you accidentally, you forget, that day you forget, eh? you only score one point. We give 50% discount of your answer if you don't give us unit. Okay? So just give you hints. Eh? I'll keep reminding you. Uh, keep reminding you until you remember. What about, okay, so after that, because you're dealing with vector, always, uh, it's a good practice, always give the direction of your velocity. So Vx, you get two meter per second, you get a positive value. What mean by positive value? Means your x always to the right positive. So your V direction is to the right. Okay, always have that practice, uh, have that uh, good practice. 
when you get a positive number, always give the direction, right? So X is to the right positive. Always draw the, you can, you can draw arrow and put positive sign there, okay? And because in question, I will, I will always ask my student, uh, I, will, I will give hints in the question, uh, calculate the magnitude of magnitude and direction of your something. So here, when you calculate Vx, uh, it's good practice to give arrow. And continue with the Vy. Vy, this one, concerned with the change in y direction. So this is x direction. You don't need to look at it for y direction. You only look at this one. So basically this one, you differentiate y equation, y equal to x squared divided by five. Basically you differentiate over t. Is there any t there? So if the, there's no t there, means you get, uh, sorry, uh, is there a t, any t there? Yeah, okay. So, um, in this case, you need to um, you need to change your x uh, in t because uh, these two are linked up. Uh, these two are linked up, so you need to substitute this one inside here. Okay, although there's no t here, but you see x, and in the question, the x and y are tied up together. So when you do analysis. Remember to look into the question, is there any linkage between the parameter or not? If your x equal to something, then remember to substitute. So here you substitute 2t here. Substitute 2t here. You expand this one and then you only then you do differentiation. Here you get 4 because you multiply by 2 and uh, not you uh, yeah, multiply by uh, power of 2, so 4t square together with 1 over 5, you get 4 over 5t square, you differentiate with t, again, uh, go back to your differentiation chapter in mathematics, when you do differentiation, what do you do? You pull the exponential component 2 to the front, Okay, then this one, the left out 2 minus 1. You pull the 2 to the front. This one minus 1, you get the answer of differentiation. So you pull the 2 to the front. This one copy, 4 over 5. And this one, 2 minus 1, you get 1. So t, t power 1, you still get t. So the answer for y direction will be 8 over 5 t. Okay, y over t. But the question asks you at the time of two seconds, you can substitute your t at two seconds here, substitute inside here. Okay, so the direction is going up, just to remind yourself, this one is going up. So you have two values just now. You calculated your vx equal to this one. You calculate your vy equal to over 5t. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. If you have a question, go ahead. Yeah, go um, ahead. I just wanted to see something on the, the previous screen. This one? Yes, sir. Yeah, which one? Uh, anything you have question? Um, no, I, I didn't. Copy or, or you, or you oh, want to copy? Okay, that's fine. You want to copy, is it? <laughs> you want to copy the answer, is it? Yes, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, okay, good. All right. So you have your Vx, Vy. What you do next is just substitute the information inside because the question asks you to focus on two seconds. You substitute 2s here, two seconds there. Your Vy during the two seconds is 3.20 meter per second. Uh, again, for this module, minimum two decimal place, maximum three decimal place. You can give your answer in three decimal place or two minimum two decimal place. Don't oversimplify in this module. Eh? Just a reminder, when you answer question for test one or test two or your final exam, you need to give your answer in two decimal place minimum, maximum three decimal place. 
and give me the unit. Okay, again, uh, answer without unit, we will practice discount 50% from the marks given. This one, two marks in the uh, in our marking, marking sheet. We see the number, we didn't see unit, then we will give you 50% of that mark. So if the question, if the marking scheme is two mark, you only see number, you only score one mark. Huh? Okay. So you know that the question asks you to find magnitude. Magnitude equation is what you learned just now. Vx squared plus Vy squared plus Vz squared, but this one is 2D problem. You don't need to consider Z. You substitute your answer. 2 squared plus 3.2 squared you get your V. Okay, so I, I don't I don't uh, substitute value. Huh? You do the, the the value as your homework, but just to check whether you can click correct or not, the answer is three point seven seven meter per second. In in the test or final exam, you need to show me the substitution. Huh? You need to show me the steps. Just a reminder, right? You need to show me the steps in during test or final exam. This is just to quickly uh, jump to the answer, right? Next one, okay. Next one, because this is the magnitude of your velocity. Next one, you, you need to plot the x, y, and z because this is x, vx equal to two. So when you draw on the diagram, the length of the arrow will be the magnitude of what you calculated. So Vx is here. Uh, your Y going up is 3.2, so a bit longer than your Vx. You learned trigonometry before, right? You learned about vector before. You have two vectors like that. When you combine these two, the, the, you can get the ang angle of the third resultant, right? I draw it for you. When you have two vectors like that, you can draw the resultant of the vector, right? So how do you do the vector diagram? Also go back to your uh, mathematics uh, chapter. Go and find vector chapter, how to draw resultant. So Vx, Vy, you combine the front and end, you get resultant. You pull out the Vx, continue with Vy. You how to draw resultant from the origin to the endpoint of the two vector. You get resultant. So this is the angle of your velocity or the direction of the velocity. So basically, this is a 2D problem. So 2D problem, you use more simpler equation where is the inverse tangent of Vy divided by Vx is basically is a triangular question. A basic triangular question to find angle at this one. So you use the tangent equation. Tangent is opposite divided by x. Then you inverse the tangent from this side, from the left hand side, you inverse it. You get the answer. Again, in test or final exam, remember to substitute and show me the calculation. So if you calculate correctly, you'll get 58 degree. Okay. Any questions so far? Anything that uh, doesn't make sense to you? Anything that seems very weird to you? Right? You can ask me a question now. Sir, before I sh Yes, go ahead. If the balloon is tied to the building, then why will it be moving in the first place? Uh, you mean moving? Yes, because it's tied to the building, so isn't it supposed to be stationary? No, uh, because you see, uh, this is a free moving equation, right? Your x extend with time. Your x moving with two time, I mean two t. The more you, uh, although it's tied, but you are given the x uh, equation, where the more time that you spend, the longer x that it will go. Means this balloon will float in x direction and also in y direction because your y equation, uh, displacement in y given in x squared divided by five. 
and what is your x? And x is 2t. So actually, it is keep in the curvature and it will moving to the left and going up. Yeah, although although on the diagram it, it doesn't look like it's it's moving, but be careful on the mathematics equation that is given. If your x is a fixed number, your y is a fixed number, then the balloon doesn't move. But if you're having a linear equation here, quadratic equation here, you combine these two means something is moving. Do I answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Any question before we move on? Next, we need to calculate acceleration. We have done velocity. Uh, velocity. Apply the same for acceleration by looking back the definition of acceleration. And I just copy back the, um, the equation for your Vx and Vy because these are the two things we need to relate to acceleration. Call the definition of acceleration. In the derivation of equation just now, your acceleration you have in x direction, y direction, and z direction. So in x direction, you take the rate of change of velocity in x direction. You take dvx divided by dt. This is your dx. This is a full number or a constant value. You differentiate a constant value, you get zero. Okay? You differentiate a constant value, d dt2, you get zero. Meaning, acceleration in x direction is constant, uh, is zero because you have a constant velocity. What about y? y is the rate of change of velocity in y direction towards time. So ay equal to dvy divided by t or differentiation to uh, using time. So you substitute the equation for vy. Okay, uh, just be careful when you solve this on a question, look carefully the equation that you have and not to get stuck in that particular time. You need to uh, keep yourself clear that your motion is having in the equation. You are giving, giving an equation and not a fixed number. Okay, so if you have an equation and you, you do differentiation, sometimes you get a fixed number, sometimes you get um, uh, from a quadratic equation into linear equation. So here you get dv, y, dt for y direction, for acceleration. This is the constant value. I always like to pull my constant value outside and I do the differentiation. So when I do my differentiation, dt or dx, I get 1 or dt. Uh, dt, dt, I get 1. So 1 multiplied by 1 over 5, I get 8 over 5, right? Okay, so you use your calculator. The answer is 1.60 meter over second square. Again, in your answer later on, remember to put in the unit. Eh? If you just give me the numbers, I will give you 50% discount for the answer. Okay, find the magnitude, same. You have AX. A y, you don't have a z, so just ignore this one. Square this one, square this one, add together, square root. You will get this one. Again, in your test, in your exam, show me your calculation. Eh? Show me your calculation. There is a marks for calculation. Don't straight away give me answer. Eh? Show me your calculation. Okay, you get 1.6. All right, so 1.6, why? Because your x zero, 1.6 square, square root, you still get back 1.6. Are you able to plot the graph, uh, plot the direction of your acceleration? I 
okay at point B, your acceleration at y axis, uh, sorry, at x, x, x direction is zero. So uh, there's nothing there in x direction. So I use the dash arrow to represent there's no magnitude for that vector. There is a direction, but no magnitude, zero. So that's why I use dash line to represent no magnitude, but direction in x. What about y? Y is 1.6 meter per second. I use solid line arrow and I label as AY. By looking at this, the direction of your acceleration, we use tangent. Again, we use tangent, although this one is 90 degree, but you know when you do calculation, this one, AY is full number, AX zero, tangent zero, or tangent infinity, sorry. Tangent infinity is 90 degree. If you plot tangent graph, okay? If you plot tangent graph, how you get uh, infinity value is at where you have a 90 degree, uh, you will get infinity, All right? So uh, call back your trigonometry scale, call back your trigonometry chapter. Okay, you get 90 degree or from here, basically you can guess the direction of your acceleration is actually going up because there's no X direction. So you only left out going up. So theta V is 90 degree. Uh, any question? Or acceleration? Any question? Everything clear, right? Clear, sir. Okay. What else? Huh? Okay. Let's look at one more example, then we call it a day, right? It's a long day for all of us. Uh, we continue after we solve this one uh, in our next class. Our next, oh, next one, next week already, yeah. Okay. Can uh, we? Can you guys go for one more example, or you guys need break? What do you guys think? Do you guys need short break, or you want to continue? Break. Sir. Break. Ah, uh? okay. Okay. Let's have a short break. Let me end the recording. We have uh, 10 minutes breaks.